So good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, people in uh, Asia, and good morning to uh, the speaker, Dr. Himan Sufulara, and uh, other people who are from Europe. So it's my real pleasure to welcome you to this uh, 43rd uh, seminar in the uh, webinar series on swing tonics, or we call it W2S. So uh, <clears throat> you may know uh, Dr. Himan Sufulara, who is uh, a young uh, emerging scientist in spintronics. Uh, he has his origins from India, from IIT Delhi. Uh, I will just give a very brief introduction. Uh, Dr. Himan Sukulara has obtained his Master in Science from Kumon University in Nainital in uh, 2007. Then he moved to IIT Delhi for his uh, PhD and obtained his PhD in 2014 under the supervision of Professor Suji Chaudhary and Professor Subhas Kasya. Uh, the thesis was exchange bias investigations in ion beam spotter antiferromagnetic ferromagnetic bilayer thin films or spintronics. Then he uh, moved to Germany to Max Planck Institute for Microstructure Physics in Halle uh, for about a year uh, between 2014-2015 for postdoc and then he came back to India where he worked um, as an assistant professor in School of Basic and Applic Applied Sciences at Galgothia University in UP in India. And uh, then in, uh, he moved to Sweden, to University of Gothenburg, in the group of Professor Johan Ackermann uh, uh, since 2017 uh, till uh, March 2019. So about two years he was there as a postdoc. Then he, uh, in between, he became a visiting researcher at NanoASK uh, in Sweden. And since uh, July 2019, he is working as a researcher in the Department of Physics at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. His research areas are uh, applied spintronics and experimental nanomagnetism, neuromorphic computing, magnonics, and exchange biosystems. So, with this very brief introduction, I um, welcome uh, Dr. Himan Sufulara and all of you to this on behalf of my team, Dr. Uh, Bhushan and Bhushkendra and other um, participants. Uh, so in case there are new participants, kindly note that during the lecture we don't take questions unless it is super duper urgent. Otherwise, kindly write your questions in the chat box. At the end of the uh, lecture, we will take all the questions one by one. Okay, thank you. Himanshu, it's all yours. Please start. Looking forward. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Vedanta, for this nice introduction and uh, kind invitation for this uh, talk. And uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be the part of this uh, webinar series on Spintronics. And uh, let me take this opportunity to congratulate you, Professor Vedanta, and your team for uh, organizing this uh, excellent uh, webinar series on spintronics and bringing us together uh, on this platform. So um, I will be speaking about uh, spin hall and oscillators and I will convince you by the end of the talk uh, with the prospects of these spin hall and oscillators for neuromorphic computing applications. So uh, uh, this is the outline of my talk. So I will start with a brief uh, overview of spin hall and oscillator devices. And uh, so in particular, I will focus on nanoconstriction based spin hall and oscillators and their mutual synchronization in a chain. And in the second part of my talk, I will discuss about uh, the mutual synchronization in two dimensional uh, network of oscillators. And I will discuss the prospects of these spin hall and oscillator networks for neuromorphic computing applications. And finally, I will talk about uh, a new state of art of our spin hall and oscillator device, which is basically uh, voltage controlled uh, uh, spin hall and oscillators. And I will discuss how these spin hall and oscillators can be used as a propagating spin wave source and how we can individually tune an oscillator in a large network of uh, spin hall and oscillators. So uh, uh, let's uh, start uh, with this question so Why do we study these uh, spintronic nano oscillators? So, if you look at the internet of, internet of things around, we see a huge demand of nanoscale microwave sources for 
various applications such as RF wireless communications where these oscillators can be used as a sensor and uh, unconventional wave-based computing, which we also known as magnonics and the recently developed microwave assisted hard disk drives, which was announced by Western Digital in late 2019 and the emerging neuromorphic computing. Now, in all these applications, uh, the common basic requirement is low energy consumption, faster operation, and the tunability of these uh, uh, frequencies. Now, apparently, these uh, spintronic nano oscillators fulfill all these demands as they can be miniaturized to nano dimensions, and uh, they are operational at gigahertz frequencies, and their highly nonlinear properties allows them to synchronize in large number of uh, oscillators in a chain or in a two-dimensional uh, array, and they are tunable with both current and magnetic fields. And, uh, and uh, most importantly, these oscillators can also be, can be synchronized in a, in a chain so that they can be used as a, uh, so, so that they can be used to mimic neuron interactions of our brain. Uh, uh, so, and we will see this part uh, in my talk. Uh, now, uh, let me quickly go through the basic principle of operation of these spin hole and oscillators or spintronic and oscillators, I would say. So uh, when a ferromagnetic material is subjected to a magnetic field, uh, the individual movements in this ferromagnetic material start to collectively process around this external magnetic field. So, uh, however, due to the magnetic damping of the material, this processing motion gets damped very fast. And eventually the magnetism vector aligns along the direction of the external magnetic field. Uh, now, uh, the question is how do we counteract this damping torque? So if, if you look at this uh, magnetism dynamics, this is well described by this landau lipschitz equation. So in which we have a precessional term and we have a damping term which opposes this precessional motion. Now, if we can come up with an additional spin transfer torque, which can counteract this damping and eventually come completely compensated, then we can have a steady state magnetism precession at microwave frequencies. Now, the question is, how do we generate this anti-damping torque? So there are uh, basically two uh, prominent approaches to, to generate this anti-damping torque. So in one of the approaches, we, uh, we use structures uh, of two ferromagnetic layers separated by non-magnetic spacer layer, such as magnetic tunnel junctions or spin walls. So in these structures, we have uh, we have one ferromagnetic layer which acts as a polarizer, which basically polarizes this charge current, and these spin polarized electrons basically drives the magnetism dynamics in another ferromagnetic layer, which is called the free layer. And then we have this uh, these auto oscillations, uh, and we we call these uh, these oscillators spin torque nano oscillators. So these are the conventional spin torque nano oscillators which has been studied over the uh, over many years. Now the emerging approach, uh, the another energy energy efficient approach, which utilizes the concept of spin hole effect, uh, in which we have a charge current which which is injected through this non magnetic heavy metal such as platinum, tantalum, tungsten, and due to the high spin uh, uh, spin orbit interaction of these heavy metals, the electrons with opposite spins deflected along the perpendicular directions where they produce the spin current, and now this and this pure spin current has the potential to drive the magnetism dynamics in nanoscopic regions at very at, at frequencies as much as gigahertz uh, range and we we call these oscillators spin hole and oscillators so i will focus on these uh, spin hole and oscillators in my talk so uh, if we look at the background of these spin hole and oscillators to minimize the threshold current density different groups have proposed different uh, device layouts of these spin hole and oscillators over the years so in 2012, Professor Ralph and his co-workers have uh, demonstrated these nanopillar-based spin hole and oscillators. And on the same year, Professor Dimokrito along with Professor Demido have uh, reported these nanogap-based spin hole and oscillators. And two years later, the same group has also demonstrated the nanoconstriction geometry of these spin hole and oscillators. And uh, recently, we have also seen the nanowire-based uh, spin hole and oscillators. Now, among these various device layouts presented so far, this nanoconstriction geometry um, is particularly attractive uh, because, uh, because of this easy nanofabrication process and the flexible device geometry. And most importantly, these uh, oscillators allows the access to, uh, to uh, allow the optical access to probe this dynamical region. And one can also note this uh, auto oscillation frequency behavior with uh, the drive current. 
So uh, we see this red separate frequency behavior, which is quite typical for these nanoconstriction based devices in the implant magnetic fields. And this uh, red separate frequency behavior is because of the fact that these auto oscillating modes are strongly localized in this constriction region. So uh, we were quite um, uh, uh, quite motivated with this uh, these devices, these uh, particular nanoconstriction based devices, and our group have has measured these devices in the outer plane magnetic fields. Uh, in order to minimize this localization effect, which is uh, basically undesirable from, from the many uh, technological application point of view. So we, we measured these nanoconstriction based uh, spin hole instruments in out of plane magnetic fields, and we observed a positive current tunability with the drive current. And uh, in 2017, we reported uh, the smallest possible 20 nanometer spin hole oscillator device, where we can have uh, the microwave uh, signal at frequencies of um, about 15 gigahertz to 16 gigahertz uh, uh, in, in the frequency range as a function of current. And uh, following in the following year, we also demonstrated the CMOS compatible operation of these spin hole and oscillators. Basically, what we have uh, done here is uh, we fabricated these uh, spin hole and oscillators over a highly resistive silicon substrate, which uh, exhibits high thermal conductivity and low microwave losses, and therefore CMOS compatible. Uh, to uh, therefore, the, therefore making these oscillators CMOS compatible. And uh, in the outer plane magnetic fields, we have a typical uh, non-monotonic uh, current dependence of this frequency. So we, where we have a red shifted frequency behavior and followed by a blue shifted one. And I will discuss this behavior in the following slides. And uh, so they are quite tunable with, uh, with, uh, with current as well as magnetic fields, fields. So we have a tunability of about 10 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz in these oscillators. Uh, now, uh, now uh, my colleague Mikola, uh, Mikola has uh, studied these oscillators micromagnetically, and what he has observed is that uh, in the outer plane magnetic fields, these auto oscillating mode uh, expands in the constriction region, and basically this expansion of this mode uh, can allow the neighboring oscillators to interact. And this is exactly what we have done in our experiments. So in 2017, our group has demonstrated uh, mutual synchronization of these uh, nine identical oscillators in a chain. And this uh, mutual synchronization was achieved due to this dipolar dipolar interaction of these oscillators, which is uh, facilitated, facilitated by this uh, mode expansion in the outer plane magnetic fields. And as you can see that the synchronization can be seen as an increased output power as we increase the drive current and the reduction in the line width. So you can see that in the unsynchronized state, the, our line width is about 10 uh, megahertz, and this reduces to about a one megahertz in the synchronized state. And the power also goes, uh, increases substantially. Uh, now uh, I come to the second part of my talk uh, in which I will discuss this neuromorphic computing uh, part. So, uh, so we extended our synchronization studies to the two-dimensional case. So uh, in 2019, we, uh, we have demonstrated mutual synchronization of uh, in a two-dimensional array of oscillators, which comprises of oscillators as much as 64 oscillators in an area of less than a square micron. And as you can see here, we have uh, shown the uh, mutual synchronization behavior of this uh, four by four array of oscillators. And uh, so since our oscillators are synchronized along the chain, so we have four individual signals. And when we increase the drive current, these four individual signals starts to synchronize. And we have a substantial increase in the output power and the reduction in the line width. And we extracted the line width as a function of number of oscillators. And we have observed a very nice uh, one by n dependence of this line width as a function of number of oscillators, which is quite consistent with the prediction of the synchronization theory. And uh, we observed a minimum line width of about 60 kilohertz for the case of eight by eight array of oscillators. And this translates into a quality factor of about 170,000 at a frequency of about 10 gigahertz. And which to the best of our knowledge is the highest reported quality factor um, in any synchronized network. The earlier record was from the <clears throat> National Institute of uh, Technology um, uh, uh, in 2004. Uh, and then, then we wanted to, uh, to understand this, uh, we wanted to perform the neuromorphic computing uh, uh, with this uh, network. So uh, 
in a recent study, uh, Yuli Grolier and her co-workers uh, have used uh, four vortex oscillators, which are individually powered I, from with current I1, I2, I3, and I4, and they basically uh, performed a neuromorphic valve recognition using this network of four oscillators. So in their arrangement, so each oscillator acts as a neuron. So these individual oscillators basically acts as a neuron and they basically uh, power uh, train this uh, hardware in such a way that they use two independently tunable uh, external frequencies, FA and FB, which were injection logged to this network of oscillators. And then they, they obtained a synchronization map which can distinguish 20 different injection logged states. For example, this green color uh, 3B represents to a state where the oscillator 3 is injection logged to, uh, to the frequency FB. So what it means that we can uh, distinguish 20 different neuron interactions of our brain with this synchronization map. And uh, then they train this hardware in such a way that each vowel, so these are basically the French vowels, presented as an input to this hardware can be accommodated into a certain synchronization state given by this synchronization map. So uh, they basically, they were able to recognize seven vowels uh, uh, spoken by the 37 different speakers with a recognition rate of 85%. So, uh, so we tried to, uh, to perform the similar uh, neuromorphic computing um, uh, operation and or we, we wanted to see whether our, uh, our uh, array of oscillators can be capable of performing these uh, neuromorphic computing things. So we did the same thing. We basically uh, uh, use our four by four array of oscillators. So in our arrangement, each chain acts as a neuron. And uh, the interesting thing is that we, we basically powered this array with a single drive current compared to the previous case. And uh, with two uh, independently tunable microwave frequencies, FA and FB, we, we injection log to this network of four oscillators. We produce a similar synchronization map, which can distinguish 20 different injection log states. However, at a frequency, which is much higher than the previous case. So these are the gigahertz frequencies. And if you look at here, that these are the megahertz frequencies. So our frequencies are 25 times higher than the uh, frequencies uh, in, in this previous demonstrations. And uh, we believe that our approach is more scalable because uh, we, can, uh, we can increase the number of oscillators in this, uh, in this RH and we can, uh, we can uh, power this, this type of oscillators with a single drive current. However, the limitations of this uh, arrangement is that we, in order to train such a large network, we, uh, we require an individual oscillator control. And this brings me to the last part of my talk where I will discuss uh, how, we can, uh, how we can individually tune uh, an oscillator in a, in a large network of oscillators. So, uh, so we basically took advantage of this uh, voltage controlled magnetic anisotropy effect, which is well reported in the literature. So, in general, there are two types of voltage controlled uh, uh, magnetic anisotropy effect. One, uh, one is of electronic origin, which arises due to the redistribution of charge densities across this ferromagnetic oxide interface. And the other effect is of ionic origin, which takes place due to the migration of uh, oxygen ions accord, uh, across this uh, ferromagnetic oxide interface. And uh, this ionic effect is, uh, has a larger control over this PMA. Uh, for example, this is in the femtojoule per voltmeter and this is in the picojoule per, volt, per uh, voltmeter. So, uh, so we wanted to take advantage of this VCM effect in our oscillator devices. So for that purpose, we uh, fabricated PMA-based uh, spin hole and oscillators. So these are the, so we basically fabricated tungsten, cobalt and boron, magnesium oxide based spin hole and oscillator devices where this PMA originates from this uh, cobalt and boron magnesium oxide interface. So, so this, uh, this type of oscillators basically serve two objectives. So one is basically we can use these oscillator devices uh, to individually tune uh, this oscillator with this VCM effect. And an another thing we, which we wanted to explore is that how we can overcome this localization effect completely in this constriction region. So from the analytical calculations, we plotted uh, this nonlinearity coefficient, which I will explain uh, in this, uh, from this uh, figure. So this nonlinearity coefficient is given by this equation where this omega is the frequency of auto oscillation and omega zero is the frequency of ferromagnetic resonance. So basically this nonlinearity coefficient uh, defines the magnetization dynamics in these oscillator devices. So we plotted this nonlinearity coefficient as a function of PMA field. And this is completely analytical calculation. 
And then when, what we observed here is that for higher perpendicular magnetic anisotropy field, we have a po large positive nonlinearity, which means that the frequency of the auto oscillation can be increased to the extent that we can excite propagating spin waves. And this is, and uh, then we calculated the uh, these magnitude dynamical parameters where we have uh, estimated this damping constant of uh, damping constant perpendicular magnetic anisotropy field and the spin hall angle. And then we uh, perform this auto oscillation measurements. So what we expected is that it should excite, it should in principle excite the propagating spin waves. And uh, in our experiment, we basically observed this excitation of uh, propagating spin wave auto oscillations, which is uh, clearly uh, clearly identified um, as the as the frequency above the fMR frequency, which clearly indicates the propagating nature of these uh, spin wave spin wave auto oscillations. And uh, and from these uh, equations, we estimated a propagation length of about 1.1 micrometer. And this behavior is um, also reproducible in different device widths. For example, here we have uh, shown uh, this uh, auto oscillations for 150 nanometer. And here, the similar behavior was observed for the 200 nanometer devices. And then we also studied the current uh, tunability of this propagating spin wave auto oscillations. So, and uh, we observed two. Uh, to distinctly different behavior of this uh, current dependence of auto oscillations. At lower magnetic fields, we have a non-monotonic current dependence. However, at higher magnetic fields, we have a, a completely blue shifted, blue shifted frequency behavior. So this, uh, this uh, different behaviors can be understood from this uh, analytical, uh, analyti analytically color, uh, calculated color map. So where we uh, see that at lower magnetic fields, we have a we are in the in the regime where we have a negative nonlinearity. Th therefore, we observe a red shifted frequency behavior. But once we increase the drive current, so we we uh, switch into the positive nonlinearity regime. Therefore, we observe a blue shifted frequency behavior, which crosses this uh, fMR uh, uh, threshold. However, at higher magnetic fields, we are already in the positive nonlinearity regime. Therefore, we only observe this blue shifted frequency behavior, and this. Uh, this experimental results were also reproduced in our micromagnetic simulations, where we can clearly observe the transition from a localized nature of these uh, auto oscillations to the propagating ones with increasing k vector. Uh, now, with this understanding, we fabricated electrically gated uh, spin hall and oscillators with a voltage controlled gate over this constriction region. So this is basically the scanning electron micrograph image of our actual device, which is located here. And these are the zoomed version of this, uh, this area. And these are the typical layer ordering where we use the similar, uh, uh, similar materials. And we collaborated uh, uh, with our Japanese uh, colleagues uh, for these stacks. And, uh, and then we performed this uh, spin wave auto oscillations uh, measurement at different gate voltages. So basically we can, apply the gate voltage through these connections uh, like here from here and uh, here we can inject the DC current from these two terminals. Uh, so what we observed is that we have a uh, uh, we have a dramatic change in the threshold current and and, uh, and, and, and and in the frequency as well. So we extracted these frequencies which is plotted here. and we observed a frequency tunability of about 50 megahertz with a gate voltage change of 4 volt. And, uh, and if we extract this threshold current and we observe a about, about a 22% uh, modulation in the threshold current, uh, which is quite, quite uh, significant given this, uh, given this low, uh, uh, lower tunability of this uh, frequency. So we wanted to understand the, the region behind these uh, voltage induced tunabilities. So uh, we performed uh, spin transfer torque ferromagnetic resonance measurements. And here we have shown this STFMR peaks at different gate voltages. And we can, from this resonance peak positions, we can extract the effective magnetization, which shows a, a modulation of about 14%, uh, which translates into a 1% tunability in the, in the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy. And we extracted this VCMA coefficient of about 100 femtojoule per voltmeter. So this is purely electric field effect. Uh, and then we, sorry, then we extracted this uh, line width from these measurements and uh, line width shows a dramatic change with the gate voltages. And we extracted the, the damping, which we call effective damping, since we have uh, uh, performed these measurements in our uh, spin hall and devices. 
So the effective damping shows a, a substantial modulation in this uh, damping constants, which is about 40% with a gate voltage change of 4 volts. So uh, now if you look at the literature, uh, uh, Japanese group has, uh, has studied these, uh, these, uh, these stacks of tantalum, cobalt, and boron magnesium oxide, and they observed a rather small effect of damping with, a, with electric field. However, uh, in our case, we observed a large uh, change in the, in the damping modulus. And so we wanted to understand the, the origin behind this. Uh, so we performed uh, micromagnetic simulations in order to understand this, uh, this dynamical behavior of auto oscillating mode in this gated region. So and our findings were quite interesting. So what we observed is that for the negative gate voltage, where we have observed a, a, a large damping, uh, we observed a complete uh, delocalization of our auto oscillating mode. However, for the positive gate voltage, where the uh, where the damping is very small, as well as the PMA is also very small, we observed a strong localization of our auto oscillating mode. So, what it essentially means there is that uh, the negative voltage, where we observed a last a large PMA, uh, the the radiation of the magnons in the in the in the magnetic leads is more prominent. Therefore, therefore, the auto oscillating mode experiences a larger load, which is reflected in the large damping in our experiments. However, for the uh, for the positive gate voltage, uh, the stronger localization basically reduces the magnetic losses in the magnetic leads. Therefore, we uh, we uh, we observed a lower damping for the positive gate voltage, and uh, and we extracted uh, the damping constant values from these micromagnetic simulations, and uh, these uh values are quite consistent with our experimental results so uh and uh, we can also verify this behavior this uh this uh, localization and delocalization of mode with the stfmr measurements so for that we have uh, observed the current dependent line widths uh, as, a, uh, as a function of uh, at, at different frequencies and the slope basically uh, defines the extent to which this mode is localized in this in this gated region or in the constriction region. So, so we have observed a larger slope value for the positive gate voltage and uh, lower slope values for this negative gate voltage. So, which is quite consistent with our micromagnetic simulations. Uh, now, uh, so far, uh, the the effects what we have observed in our gated device is completely uh, electric fields driven, uh, and these uh, now what happens when we increase this uh, electric field by increasing the gate voltage. So we basically, uh, so what happens is that this, uh, between the electrode and, the, and this uh, uh, oxide interface, a conductive ionic bridge starts to build up. And uh, at, a, at a large value of this uh, electric field value, this uh, forms a complete conducting layer between this electrode, uh, uh, between this electrode and this oxide interface. And the uh, and our uh, gate exhibits a low resistance state. So, for example, basically, so in the high resistance state, the the effect is completely electric field driven. However, when we increase the gate voltage at a particular gate voltage, it it switches into the low in, into this low resistance state because of this migration of oxygen ions um, across this electrode and this uh, interface. So basically, what it means is that uh, we can uh, we we have two mem resistive states like uh, like uh, high resistance state and low resistance state, and therefore our oscillators can behave as a mem resistor mem resistor um, under the under the influence of this electric field. And uh, you can see that the frequency in the high resistance states is completely controlled by the electric field. Therefore, we decrease we observe a decrease in the frequency in the high resistance state as we increase the the gate voltage because the our PMA basically uh, decreases uh, uh, with increasing the gate voltage. And here uh, in the low resistance state, this frequency increases because, because of the fact that now the membership current basically adds or, or subtracts into this, uh, into this SHNO current. Therefore, we, we observe the increase in the frequency. And uh, in the reverse operation, in the in the reverse sweep, uh, when we when we swept the gate voltage from positive gate voltage to negative gate voltage, this low resistance state remains intact up to a certain gate voltage. So basically what it, what it means is that this uh, low resistance state is a non-volatile state. Uh, 
now uh, I will uh, show you how we can uh, control the synchronization with this uh, with this memory system gate. So here we have a chain of four oscillators, uh, one, two, three, and four, and we have two uh, memory system gates, M1 and M2. Uh, now, uh, when we basically studied this uh, current dependent auto oscillations um, of this uh, network of four oscillators when both the gates were floating. So basically M1 and M2 are off right now. And so we have seen this uh, synchronized state in the beginning. And this synchronized state basically uh, breaks um, into two branches when we increase the drive current. And we identified these frequency branches as this upper frequency branch correspond to oscillator three and four and the lower frequency branch correspond to uh, oscillator one and two. And this is this was identified purely on the basis of our gated operation, which I will show you uh, next. Now, uh, we basically operate this uh, gate M1 and we swept the gate voltage from uh, minus two volt to four volt. And we are, uh, so we basically operated on this point, which is about 0 0.712 milliampere. So at this point, we swept the gate voltage from minus two volt to four volt. So what, it, uh, what happens is that the upper frequency branch, which is basically F34, it is starts to operate, uh, to approach the lower frequency branch and at a certain, certain gate voltage, about 2.5 about, about or 3 volt, which is even, which is still in the high resistance state. These frequencies basically uh, uh, approaches each other and then we, we arrived at the synchronization state. So what it means basically that we have uh, obtained a synchronization state by uh, by tuning this gate voltage from uh, by tuning this gate voltage to a particular voltage and this synchronization state um, remains intact and even in the low resistance state so we can see that the synchronization state is uh, is still uh, there at uh, the low resistance state while reversing back if we uh, if we uh, decrease the gate voltage from from four point uh, for five volt to the negative gate voltage, this synchronization state remains there until it uh, reduces until it uh, breaks at a at a positive gate voltage of about one volt. So basically, what it means is that we can uh, control this synchronization behavior of this uh, this uh, chain or as well as uh, as well as two dimensional array with the help of this voltage induced. Uh, gated operation over this over this uh, dynamical region so with this i would like to summarize my talk so i have uh, demonstrated the cmos compatible operation of these spin hall and oscillators and i have also shown uh, this mutual synchronization in in a linear chain of spin hall and oscillator as well as two dimensional arrays and uh, i also discussed the prospects of uh, neuromorphic computing with the spin hall and oscillator networks and I have also uh, shown how we can excite the propagating spin waves in spin hall and oscillators using the perpendicular magnetic and isotropy. And uh, I also uh, shown how we can tune an individual oscillator in a large network uh, with the help of voltage controlled electric field or the, or the memory system uh, control. So, with, uh, so I would like to acknowledge uh, 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 people who have contributed in this work. Mohammed uh, Jahidinijad have uh, have uh, fabricated most of the devices. And for the theoretical part, uh, Roman uh, Kaimin and Mikola Devrunovic has performed these micromagnetic simulations. And these are our other group members in our group. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, thank you for your kind intentions. Okay, thank you so much, Himansu, uh, for this very nice overview of your recent results. Very interesting uh, research. Uh, before we take some questions, uh, so um, I like to just mention that uh, there are many new people I see. Uh, yeah. so next week, um, uh, Thursday, so same time, 3 p.m., we will have the seminar by Professor Christian Bach uh, okay. from Germany, uh, who, is a big, uh, who is going to give an overview of spin on effect. And uh, just an advertisement again that on 3rd of June, our 50th uh, lecture in this series of webinars will be given by uh, the Nobel Prize winner for Salvador Okay, uh, so before we take some uh, questions by audience, it would be very nice, Imansu, uh, yeah. if you could explain, because there are a lot of students um, yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, if you could explain how you fabricate the samples, uh, what exactly they are, and then the process involved, and the measurement procedure also. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, two things, if you could explain, then we will take the uh, technical questions. All right. Yeah. So if you look at this, uh, uh, well, I, 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 I have not uh, much involved in this fabrication part, but I will, uh, I will show you uh, that what we do actually uh, here. So uh, I think this is the this is the better version to explain. I think yeah. So uh, so basically, so this is our uh, layer ordering stacks. So we have these uh, thin film stacks, and then we basically uh, 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 define this message in this uh, in these stacks uh, with this uh, 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 ledger. Uh, what, what we call this, uh, uh, I forgot the name. So we, we basically define these mejas and then we, uh, then we basically uh, each these constriction areas, like uh, this, these are the nano constriction areas. Well, this is more, little complicated to understand because here we have a gate over it also. So uh, in order to protect these side walls uh, over this, we basically use the silicon nitride layer, which can, which protects these side walls here. And, uh, and these, uh, these nano constrictions are basically, and then we deposited these electrical pads uh, uh, over this. And then with this, uh, with this photo resistive, photo resistive, we basically, it's the, uh, the undesirable portions uh, to define these nano constrictions areas. And uh, from the measurement, so this is basically the typical device. Uh, this is basically the typical device which is connected through these electrical pads. These are these are basically the electrical pads, and this is the device which is located here. So I think you can see this device here, like this device is located here, which is connected to the electrical pads. So we inject the DC current through these two electrical pads. So this is the ground, and then we extract the signal from this. Uh, bias T and which is amplified through this low noise amplifier and which is uh, detected through this spectrum analyzer. And uh, the gate voltage was applied through these two terminals, through, through these ter terminals. And normally, uh, I, I don't know whether we have this uh, picture. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. So normally we have, if we do not have any gate, then we have this type of, uh, uh, so this is the optical microscope image of our uh, of our device where the SHNO device is located here, and these are the th three electrical pads: ground, signal, and ground. So this is what uh, uh, what it is. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, the te technique uh, technique to measure it's very similar to STFMR. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. The only difference is so basically in STFMR, what you do is that you inject the RF signal, right? Mm. So you inject the RF signal and then you measure the DC signal through this lock-in amplifier. Mm. And if here we inject the DC current and then we measure the RF signal through this bias T and then we amplify this, this, uh, this RF signal through this low noise amplifier and then detect it into the spectrum analyzer. Okay. Uh, there are questions by uh, some audience. Uh, so Pradeep Kumar out. Uh, Pradeep, please go ahead. Uh, thanks uh, for the nice talk. Uh, I had actually uh, just a simple question about these spin wave mo modes which you detect for the frequency characterization. Mm -hmm. So that when you, I mean, send an electrical current, there will be many, many kinds of spin wave modes getting excited in the magnetic systems. Mm -hmm. How do you distinguish which is coming from the self oscillation or which are the other normal uh, spin wave modes? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, let me uh, let me explain this with this uh, figure. I would say, yeah. So yes, you are right. So there are a lot of modes, but the question is, which modes can be detected, right? So if you look at this, uh, so this is basically the frequency versus k vector. So this, so so basically the 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 most of the self-localized modes are situated here, which is below FMR. And we call these modes as a localized mode, basically, or edge modes. Uh, so here, uh, so if you look at this, this dynamics uh, of this um, 
uh, auto oscillations in our spin hall and oscillators. So this dynamics is represented by this equation. So, so we omega naught is the frequency corresponding to this ferromagnetic resonance frequency, which you measure in your in your STFMR measurements. And then we have this frequency of auto oscillations, which can be below this frequency and which can be above this frequency. So basically, mm -hmm. so now if the nonlinearity is positive, then we are basically here, mm -hmm. which is basically the propagating wave regime. And if the if the nonlinearity is negative, then we are basically in this magnetic band gap where we excite these localized modes. So, so now what this effect of this nonlinearity can be seen in experiments in this way. So you here you see that initially we observe a decrease in the frequency, which is because that we are in the non we the, our nonlinearity is basically negative here. Therefore, we increase, therefore the frequency of auto oscillation decreases with the drive current. Now at a certain point, the 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 frequency starts to increase. And then it crosses over this ferromagnetic resonance uh, uh, gap, and here, so therefore, here this in this range, we excite the propagating spin waves, and here we have the localized spin waves, and this is this can be verified from the simulations also if you look at here. So here at this point, which is about uh, 0.1 milliampere, we observe a complete localization of the mode. So this is basically the localized modes, which can be either a bullet mode or a droplet, depending on the anisotropy of the ferromagnetic layer. Now, when we increase this current, so as I said that the frequency of autosyn starts to increase because the nonlinearity starts to increase. So basically when you increase the current, the angle of precession, the angle of precession basically starts to increase and which basically decreases this, uh, this uh, which basically increases this, this uh, nonlinearity. So here this red region is a negative nonlinearity and this with increasing current, we approaches the positive nonlinearity regime. Therefore, we increases the frequency. And at certain point where the nonlinearity is so large, then it crosses this FMR uh, range, and then we observe the excitation of propagating spin waves. So basically, we uh, here we observe this. Uh, here we distinguish these modes depending on the frequency variation. How our frequency varies with the current. So here you see at higher magnetic field, the, uh, we only observe this increase in the frequency. Therefore, we are already above the ferromagnetic resonance gap. So, therefore, it's it's a propagating wave, uh, propagating spin wave auto oscillations. So, I mean, uh, just to just to understand simply. So, when you are close to this fMR band, then you have all these uh, spin wave modes, these acoustic and optical modes, uh, which are getting excited according to the fMR frequency of the system. And then when you are maybe far away from FMR, like uh, maybe above it or below it, then all those modes which you have, either these localized modes or these propagating spin wave modes, those corresponds to the frequency uh, to the frequency of the self oscillation. Yeah, okay. yeah. So so basically, FMR basically distinguishes these modes. Basically, to to put it more simply, that FMR distinguishes uh, these modes. So basically, if you are if your frequency of auto oscillations is well above the FMR, then you identify these modes as a propagating mode. And if your frequency of auto oscillations is below this FMR uh, frequency, then it, it can be a localized bullet or it can be a localized droplet. And that is and that is again distinguished with the, with the anisotropy. For, for the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy case, it is a self-localized bullet. Uh, uh, for for plane sorry for in plane case it is a self localized bullet and for the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy case it can be a droplet uh, I actually actually then i'm i'm like a bit confused now so i have this one question so when you have this localized mode mm -hmm. so does it only exist when we have self oscillation or it also exists without self oscillation as, no. uh, as well no it it exists when you have a self localized auto oscillation Okay, okay, yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, now, uh, the next question is by Professor Pranam Muduli. And you go ahead. Uh, hello. Hello, 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 sir. Good to see you. Mm, hello, how are you? Mm. Nice good, 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 sir. Yeah, I was uh, wondering about this uh, neuron of this uh, computing that the uh, uh, information map you showed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is just. Uh, uh, did you do any uh, recognition, or is just a map of this information? 
No, we we uh, I mean so far we have observed this synchronization map because uh, to for training as I, as I mentioned in my presentation, in order to train such a network, we needed this uh, individual control, which now we have. So what you are asking is basically our future plan. Basically, we are looking forward to that that we can how we can train such such network. Yeah, the other thing, a comment is that you said the frequency is high, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily an advantage because the power frequency that usually you get RSS, they are actually much lower frequency. So if you look at the paper from Julie Julia, they are actually increasing the frequency and then play with it. So uh, in your case, the frequency is even higher, so you have to even higher. No, but so, the frequency is in the. No, I, I don't know whether I get your point correctly, but if you look at their operational frequencies of this... Yeah, but that is, that is uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, STNO vortex accelerator frequency. Yeah. But the actual frequency of the vowels is much lower. So uh, they have to bring those frequencies to this uh, mega brain, you know. So in your case, it will be even harder because you have to now bring it to mega no, no, I mean, well, our, uh, what, what we mean is that, uh, I mean, uh, obtaining this, uh, this type of injection log state at higher frequencies means that we are basically, uh, we are basically uh, performing this operation with a faster rate. So basically, if you look at this, so if you have this, in, so if we have an injection log states at a frequency of gigahertz, then it means that we are basically increasing, we are basically, uh, uh, increasing this neuromorphic vowel recognition with a faster rate, and that's that's what what people are looking for actually. No. Okay, in that sense you are saying okay, okay. Yeah. But there is another advantage. This advantage that I mentioned that is still there. Okay. So, so uh, anyway, so the last uh, part you discussed was very interesting about this gate control. Yeah, yeah. Pranabai, your voice okay. is not clear. Hello, Pranabai, your voice is not clear. Oh, uh, what about now? Yeah, similar. It's not good. But anyway, if it is not good, then go ahead. Yeah, I think I, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please okay. go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering how, what is the synchronized running speed or uh, gate control of synchronization really? What, what, is the, really what is the synchronization? Uh, uh, the synchronization, can you, okay, this is. Because you yeah. said that the uh, synchronization can be done with a good voltage, but I didn't see that clearly. Maybe. Okay, yeah, okay. so, so okay, so le let me, so I think you are talking about this slide, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so if you see here, uh, so when, when, when the both gates are floating, basically, and they are not operational, so we have this synchronization characteristic. So we have two frequency branches now here. So we basically operated our device at this particular current, 0.712 milliampere. So we have two branches here. Now, now we, we, we are showing here that how these two branches can be changed or their frequency can be changed with the help of this gate voltage. So if you look at here, that the upper, when we increase the gate voltage from minus two volt to four volt, which is in the high resistance state, so this blue one is the blue one is the forward sweep. So even in the high resistance state, which is purely driven by the electric field, this upper frequency branch basically changes uh, its frequency. However, the lower frequency branch, branch does not change. That's why that's why I we we identified it as a as a as a frequency corresponding to oscillator one and two because the gate is here. So gate is located between these oscillators in the uh, in this uh, in this conduct in the, in this bridge basically. So 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 basically when it starts to approach when it's so when it decreases the frequency due to the effect of electric field and at a, at a certain point of about three volt it basically merges with this lower frequency branch and therefore above this point we have a synchronized state. And this synchronization state basically persists up to the low resistance state because of the strong, uh, strong coupling between the oscillators, which is purely driven by the electric field. 
So, did I answer your question, sir, or not? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, marvelous. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Muduli. Uh, now, Doctor Satya Prakash Pati has a question. I will read it him also. Yeah. Regarding memory strip operation of SHNO, uh -huh. you started experiment from negative gate voltage to positive gate voltage uh -huh. and came back again to negative gate voltage. Yeah. At negative gate voltage, HRS was observed and at certain positive voltage, you get LRS. Yes, correct. All LRS is non-volatile. My question here is, did you try other way in the uh -huh. same system Hmm. That's starting experiment from negative gate voltage to positive gate voltage. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the question is why why didn't we start from the positive gate voltage? Uh, if I understand it correctly, right? Well, the answer is very simple because uh, actually the the if we if we, if we start our uh, our operation from the positive gate voltage, I mean the conductive channel starts in in the in the beginning, right? So basically, it's it's basically uh, it's difficult to reset our device. So that's why it started from the negative gate voltage, so that so that we can sweep from the from the positive gate voltage later. So so that's that's the only reason behind that. I mean, just just to avoid that that conducting bridge uh, state at at positive gate voltage. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is by Doctor Chandrasekhar Murapaka. He is asking, yeah. how about the power of the SHN nodes as compared to MTJ-based oscillators? Yeah, uh, well, that, that's a that's an interesting question. Well, the power of these oscillators is is quite low compared to the spin transfer torque oscillators. That, that's uh, uh, because uh, uh, so earlier we have also studied this. Uh, I mean, our group has also studied the spin torque nano oscillators. So the power in these oscillators was in the nanowatt. However, here the power is about uh, picowatt. But uh, what the, the hope is basically that we can increase this uh, the power of these oscillators by putting MTJs over this uh, constriction region. So yes, uh, while well, the power still is very low, as I said, in the picowatt uh, range, but it can be scaled up or it can be matched uh, to the power of the SGNOs in the future. Yeah. Okay, very good. I see no more questions. Thank you so much uh, on behalf of our team and uh, on behalf of the list participants. So there was a huge participation, nearly 60 people. Uh, very good. So uh, thank you so much, Himansu, for your time and giving this lecture. Please stay safe. And uh, all of you, see you next week, same time, 3 p.m. for the lecture by Professor Christian Bach. Take care. Yeah, bye -bye. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to interact with you all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Take care of.